Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark by Laurie Wyman and starring Stephen Murray, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips. There's nothing like a peaceful day off in the middle of the week. You can stay in bed or glance through the windows from time to time and watch all the other idiots working themselves stupid. <laughs> of course, for Captain Povey, having a day off at home is not quite the same thing. His dear wife, Ramona, is at home as well. She makes completely certain that not a minute of his free time is wasted in pleasure. There are far too many things that need doing round the house. Henry Povey, where are you hiding yourself this time? I'm up here, my love. I thought I'd start by clearing up the attic for you. No, oh, no, you didn't. You're sitting up there dodging me and reading doubtful literature. <laughs> Nothing of the sort, my love. I got it from the library. You what? I, 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 I mean, I'm far too busy tidying up to read books. Really? Then why haven't I heard you thumping and bumping trunks about? I didn't want to disturb you, Ramona, dear. A likely story. Normally when I send you up there, you kick seven kinds of brick dust out of those trunks just because they once belonged to me dear mother. Oh, yes. I'd forgotten about that. Henry, will you stop that at once? Sorry, Ramona, my love, I tripped. <laughs> Is there something else you wanted me to do instead? Naturally. Come down here at once. Very well, my love. Straight away. Yeah! Oh, now that was my fault. I forgot to tell you I moved the stepladder to polish me whatnot. <laughs> I must say, my love, I, I do rather wish you'd remember to tell me. I fell on my... Henry, watch your language. <laughs> feet. Good boy. Now get up off your feet. <laughs> Ramona doesn't want her carpet dented. Oh, uh, sorry, pardon, my love. So I should think. If you'd had any thought for my property, you'd have tried to land on me Ramona paid for lino instead. I'll remember next time, my love. Is it time for elevens is yet? Certainly not. I'm not keeping you in goodies just so that you can kick my dear mother's bags. <laughs> <laughs> and before you have a sip of my delicious Ramona prepared cocoa, you can attend to my boiler. <laughs> Rather. Henry, don't be coarse. <laughs> now attend to me boiler at once and watch what you're doing with your clinkers. <laughs> oh, I will, my love. Stand fast. Ramona will answer on the extension. Hello. Ramona Purvis residence. Who's chatting? This is the Admiral, madam. Oh. One of Henry's little sailor friends. Hmm. <laughs> and what do you want? I want Captain Povey, and at blasted once. This is an emergency. Don't you realise that this is his day off? Was it? Well, it isn't now. Bung the fool on the blower. Oh, very well. But be quick. I've got a lot of work for him to do. For a start, he hasn't given me boiler a raking for days. <laughs> well, I, for one, madam, don't blame him. <laughs> Now, give me Captain Povey. Henry, it's a Mr. Admiral for you. Permission to chat him up on my Ramona paid for telephone. But no swapping saucy stories. I'll be listening. No, no, of course not, my love. Thank you. <laughs> Captain Povey here. At last. Who was that dreadful old biddy who answered just now? <laughs> oh, well, that was my... Well, if she's your housekeeper, you want to give her a boot. Get an old pair, girl, quick, Povey. My word, they're a tonic. <laughs> Mine was Swedish, you know. Now there's an advanced nation, if you like. Always keen to learn. By Benbow's bell bottom, so was I. <laughs> and I did. Now, oh, what did you want to speak to me about, Povey? It was you who phoned me yet. Oh, creeping Ivy, you're right. Povey, you're in the muck. What? It's Trout Bridge again. Oh, I might have guessed that. What are those fools done this time? Bash the bright blue blazes out of the relief boat that was going to take a scientist out to a weather ship, of course. No good grief. Fortunately, the scientist wasn't on board at the time. The boat was just trying to enter the harbour to pick the fool up when Trout Bridge came roaring in and belted the weather ship's launch a right fortune one. Trust them. Yeah, not even with your barge pole, Povey. Now get down to your office straight away and deal with it. That scientist has got to get out to that weather ship somehow. Yeah, very good, sir. To tell you the truth, I shan't be sorry to get out. Oh, of... do stop waffling on, Povey. And remember what I told you, dump that ghastly housekeeper of yours and get yourself an au pair girl. 
Might put some colour back in your cheeks. <laughs> My word, they're blasted helpful. Don't live eye for Yeah, no, no, no. Wait, Admiral, she's not my... Right. Play time over. <laughs> I'm not waiting any longer, Henry. Get started on my boiler. Yeah, well, I'm afraid your boiler will have to wait, my love. I want it at my office urgently. It's a crisis. Oh, trust you to get somebody to ring up so you can dodge a bit of honest toil. But don't be late for tea. No, no, no of course not, Ramona, my I love. I do not intend to spend the entire day slaving over a hot stove, boiling you an egg if you're not going to be here to eat it. <laughs> I'll be back, my love. <laughs> Right, gentlemen, I think I've heard enough. You've wrecked the relief boat to the weather ship, so you can take that scientist out instead. But we've only just docked from our last trip, sir. I was going out this evening. Correction, Mr. Phillips, you're going out now, to sea. You'll cast off as soon as the scientist comes aboard, understood? Horribly, sir. You and try not to hit anything else on the way out this time, won't you? It causes so much paperwork, and I'm a very busy man. I wonder why he joined the Navy. He'd have been just as happy in the gas board, <laughs> pushing bits of paper about. You know, I wonder what this old geezer will be like. I hope he travels well. Well, let's get him out to it and rid of him as soon as possible. We don't want him bashing the wardroom gin for days. Well, that rather depends on you, Mr. Phillips. As long as you take us out to the weather ship without going via the Azores, it shouldn't take us all that time. No, that's true. I resent that stab in lovable Leslie's back. I'll navigate that stupid old twit of a professor there as straight as a dart. How do you do, gentlemen? I'm Professor Charles. <laughs> I'm Sub-Lieutenant Phillips. <laughs> and looking forward to getting underway. I gather you are to transport me out to our weather ship for my three-month tour of duty. Hey, You mean you're the scientist? Of course. <laughs> That's done it. Now we will go via the Azores. <laughs> well, welcome aboard, uh, uh, madam. Uh, prof my professor, name uh, is Charles, actually. Well, you're the sexiest Charlie I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, well, would you, um, would you like me to show you around? No, thanks. I've been around. <laughs> oh, well, would you like to show me around? <laughs> oh, blimey, he's off. We'll never hold him now, sir. Bird happy, that's his trouble. I heard that. Jolly nice you to say so, though, Chief. <laughs> and I'm terribly happy about this one. Oh. <laughs> step, Philip, stop drooling at once, and that's an order. Uh, and now then, Professor, if you'd like to go down to the wardroom, we'll put see at once. Rather, just you follow me. I'll show you the way. We might even have you a... Stay um... right where you are, Mr. Phillips. I'm sure the Professor is quite capable of finding her own way to the wardroom where the Padre will be only too pleased to entertain her. The Padre? What a terrible waste. <laughs> terrible waste. <laughs> oh, shut up, the pair of you, and let's put to sea. The sooner we start, the sooner we'll be back. Although with you two twiddling the helm, that ain't necessarily so, is it? <laughs> Here, driver. I'll, uh, I'll just show the dockyard police my entry pass. Yeah, I say, you. Um, are you calling me, my dear? <laughs> well, you're the, uh, you're the dockyard policeman, aren't you? Oh, uh, oh I, I, I am now, my dear. Yeah, I've come down in the world a bit, I have, as you might say. You wouldn't believe it, but once, once upon a time, I was the bugler at Plymouth Barracks. <laughs> oh, well, very interesting, I'm sure. Oh, all right, you are, my dear. Spent me all day bugling, I did. <laughs> From morning till night. Nothing but bugling, bugling the old time. Bugling. <laughs> really? Well, how, uh, how terribly exhausting. Oh, uh, that it was, my dear. But all good training. After all that bugling, nobody can blow a policeman's whistle louder than I can. And I'm going to blow mine if you're not out of the dockyard in two minutes, my dear. One to get ready, two to get... No, 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 wait, wait. I've got a dockyard pass. Oh, where? Here. Oh, so you have. 
Oh, yeah, all printing and writing on it and all, yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, but we'll soon get rid of that. Stop, stop, you've destroyed it. You can't do that. I just did, my dear. <laughs> Treat them all the same, I do. Oh, you all cuts down the paperwork. But how am I going to get into the dockyard without it? Walk in, my dear. I shan't stop you. Always say the same thing about passes. What's the matter what you do, as long as you tear them up? <laughs> now, where have I heard that before? Any time you've met me, my dear, Constable Barker. And who are you? Well, it's written on that pass, actually. I'm, uh, I'm Professor Charles. Oh, no, but you can't be him, my dear, because he's already been through this gate, and him's a her. You must have read it wrong on that pass. Do you mean there's already been somebody here calling themselves Professor Charles? Ah, oh, a lovely bit of crackling she was and all. <laughs> yeah, uh, she was uh, about your height, she was, but bumpier and rounder. <laughs> Quick, you must uh, give me a telephone. She must be a spy. Oh. Apart from being attached to weather ships for met purposes, we're also an outer space tracking station. Get me the superintendent of the dockyard's office at once. That woman must be found before she gets out to the weather ship. <laughs> Just coming alongside the weather ship now, sir. See, I told you I could navigate us to it as straight as a dart, didn't I? <laughs> Don't look now, sir, but I think you just scored a double top. <laughs> Bridge, number one speaking. Starboard look out here, sir. Leading Seaman Goldstein chatting. <laughs> <laughs> First the launch, now the weather ship. Give Mr. Phillips another hour or two and he'll wipe out their entire fleet. <laughs> Nonsense. Uh, just uh, uh, high seas, that's all. That and um, a heavy crosswind and... Um... And a dopey navigating officer. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Goldstein, you've gone too far this time. Oh, no, sir. Mr. Phillips has. Unless I'm very much mistaken, that wallop cut their forward mooring chains. Once the currents get hold of it, that weather ship should whiz round and round a treat. Should be quite pretty to watch, really, from a distance. Yaki da. Yaki. Oh dear, he, he's right. Uh, quick, Chief, get a mooring rope across to the weather ship forward. Oh, I I said, honestly, all this fuss over a few yards of broken chain. And if he says they can always get some more from a chain store, I'll hit him. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, a weather ship's like this one don't have no engines. They're towed out, very carefully positioned, and then moored forward and aft. Thanks to you, this one is now only moored aft. Oh, well, it must be jolly cheap mooring chain. That's all I can say. I reckon they should sue somebody. Once they've stopped feeling giddy from spinning round and round like a top, they probably will. Us! Oh, excuse me, gentlemen. <laughs> Any time. I'm afraid there isn't a chair, so um, why not sit on my lap? Isn't it flaming marvellous? Even at a time like this, he's all set to snog. <laughs> Name me any minute of any hour of any day when he isn't. Ah, flatterer. <laughs> I was merely going to say that I must get across to our weather ship as soon as possible. It's vital for my country. I, I mean, for my work. Yeah, well, thanks to Mr. Phillips, that may be a touch difficult, madam. Of course, if it's that urgent, you could always try jumping for it next time you see it coming round. Now, don't, <laughs> don't be ridiculous. We'll get a mooring rope across, and then Professor Charles can go over in a bosun's chair. Bags, I'm bosun. Oh, shut up. <laughs> mooring rope secured, sir. And bosun's chair rigged, sir. And I, for one, want no part of it, sir. <laughs> oh, nonsense. You've been in the bosun's chair before, surely? No, sir. If Pertwee had wanted to fly over the water sitting down, he'd have joined the Air Force. <laughs> Honestly, you don't know what you're missing. I've done it before. It's bags of fun. You just sit in the chair and whiz down the rope to the other ship. It's like being at a fun fair. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoy it, Mr Phillips, because I was wondering who was going to test it for safety. Oh, naturally, I'd just like... Well, what? <laughs> Can't ask Professor Charles to go across until we're sure the bosun's chair is working properly, who? can we? Who can't? I, I can. Uh, she, she got the vote, didn't she? Well, now she can use it. She can vote Leslie doesn't have to go. I'm afraid Leslie does. Help him into the chair, Chief. With pleasure, sir. Come along, sir. Uh, well, come on, come along, sir. No, no. In you go, Mr. Phillips, sir. What? Here, come along. Up some blooming great blonde buttercup. No, steady. <laughs> hey, steady. No, 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 no let, let go, Pertwee. No, you're, you're not helping me. You're forcing me. No, wait, now, wait a minute. Now, uh, no, ooh, 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 I, uh, ah. <laughs> now, now, how did that happen? I can't get out. 
Until you land on the deck the other end, sir, I shouldn't bother to try. No, no, stop, stop. I ask the professor to go. She's the one who wants to know about the weather. I don't care if it snows ink. Wind him out, Chief. Certainly, sir. Now, wait. Wait. Well, where's your old world courtesy? Don't you know it's supposed to be ladies first? Ah! <laughs> oh, now that was a pity. Just a shade too much slack in the wire, wouldn't you think, Chief? Yeah, so it would seem, sir. Should I take the wire up, sir? Oh, yes. When you've got the time. Oh, no, I don't want to be dumped. Pull the wire in. Leslie's got her soggy seat. <laughs> Any minute now, he'll tell us to come on in. The water's fine. Oh, come on, you chaps. Lift me up. You're, you're shrinking bits of lovable Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet we are. And I know which bits. <laughs> yeah. His little flat hat has had it for a start. <laughs> now pull him out, Chief. If we leave him in the water at this temperature much longer, he'll only be three foot six high. Yeah, just as you say, sir. Winching our little blonde bonst bathing beauty in now, sir. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. Well, one can't help feeling that was a bit of a shame. <laughs> hey, what's happened? I've stopped. Uh, the winch has jammed, sir. <laughs> oh, I, I've still got submerged socks. Stop mucking about, Perjury. Winch me in. I can't, sir. It won't budge. But I can't hang out here like a load of wet washing for the rest of my life. Not to worry, Mr Phillips. If the worst comes to the worst, we'll cut the cable. Oh, that's enough. Now don't you dare! <laughs> Bridge number one speaking. I will say my titty here, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's not afternoon. It's early evening. Ah, well, being an officer, you know about these things, sir. <laughs> yes, I suppose... That... What is it, Tiddy? We're just a bit busy. Help! Help! Be quiet, Mr Phillips. Can't you see I'm on the phone? There's been an urgent signal from Captain Povey, sir. Well, read it. I have. Jolly interesting it was, and all. <laughs> I meant to me, clot. Oh. Signal reads, Captain Povey's compliments... And now what the hell have you inefficient, stupid, know-nothing, great tweets done? Yeah, well, skip the pleasantries, Tiddy. <laughs> What's gone wrong? Well, according to this, sir, what we've got on board isn't Professor Charles at all. It's a miniskirted bird-type spy. What? Don't do that, sir, please. Makes me ears go all funny. <laughs> She's not to land on the weather ship under any circumstances, and we're to return to Pompey with the miniskirted bird-type spy at once, sir. Yeah, all right. Leave this to me. I intended to. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, never mind. Uh, quick, Chief, is this it? is an emergency. Set course for Pompey and full ahead both. Set course for Pompey and full ahead both it is, sir. Uh, ah! What was, what was that bell? It sounded like, hey, hey, what's that? The wire's going tight. I, I, I'm, I'm getting higher. What, what are you? Ah, you're moving! Stop engines. So I, I'm airborne now. <laughs> <laughs> Only he's on the end of the line instead of the fish. A few more revs and I'll take up the slack again. Carry on. Isn't it really marvellous? I'm still out here, stuck in the middle of the ocean, in this bosun's chair and nobody cares. You're just not interested in what's happening to... Ah, in the name of humanity, slow down. The cable's far too tight. You do one more knot and Leslie is the thing of the past. <laughs> Right, you know. <laughs> Reduce speed, Chief, and head for Poppy. Aye, aye, sir. Mercy! <laughs> for pity's sake, mercy! <laughs> slow down before you do it. The slow! <laughs> slow down before you do something you'll regret. And so will I. <laughs> Forever! <laughs> Reducing speed in the nick of time now, sir. <laughs> Oh, 
good puffing and blowing, Povey. I tell you, the woman is a spy. But it's just not possible, Admiral. I saw her credentials. Did you know, you saucy boy? <laughs> I mean, they definitely said she was Professor Charles. Well, then they were lying, and so was she. Well, any news of Troutbridge yet? They're due to dock at any minute now, sir. Mm. Well, obviously, they're dead on time. Quite. <laughs> I told them to hand the woman over to the dockyard police immediately and then report to my office. Have you? Who said the age of miracles is past? For once in your horrible life, Povey, you've done something right. Oh, oh thank you very much, sir. So nice all of you All right, all right. <laughs> don't let it go to your blasted head. I doubt if it'll ever happen again. Oh. Well, I, I still don't know what this is all about. Well, that's hardly a novelty, is it? Thick as a board, that's your trouble. Well, do you know what's been going on, sir? Well, certainly not. I'm an admiral, so I don't have to. Yes. Ah, of course, of course. Well, I do hope this won't take much longer. So do I. They've been open for blasted hours. <laughs> I really can't apologise enough for calling you out, Admiral. That's right. You can't. I merely thought you should be informed, sir. Well, next time you want to inform me at this time of the evening, make blasted sure your beastly office isn't as dry as the blasted Sahara. Oh, I, I could get my secretary to make you a pot of tea, sir. Don't you dare. Come in. Excuse me, sir. Well, certainly. What have you done? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, sir. It's just that the officers and the chief from Troutbridge are here, sir. Now, at last, send them in. Aye, aye, sir. This way, gentlemen. Uh, thank you, Hannah. After you, chief. At times like these, I'd like to have you in front of me so you can't sneak off. Oh, as if I would, sir. After you, sir. Uh, thanks very much. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, do get a move on. Good grief. What's happened to Sub Lieutenant Phillips? <laughs> Why is he all wet and, and, and walking like that? <laughs> What's he done to himself this time? Well, we're not quite sure, sir. <laughs> but we're hoping it's not of a permanent nature. <laughs> Ooh, nasty. Look, have you handed this spy bint over? Uh, yes, sir. She's asked for her embassy to be informed. I gather she was intending to sabotage the tracking station on the weather ship in order to upset some missile trials. On the other hand, it's just possible that we may have sabotaged it just the tiniest bit. What? Well, we've ever so slightly accidentally towed the weather ship back here. <laughs> and I, for one, wish we hadn't. I was the tow road. <laughs> and I shall never be the same again. No, I don't suppose you will. Although medical science can sometimes work wonders. Yes, sir. Even when you've twisted yourself physical, he's a moderate as you have, sir. <laughs> Creeping Ivy certainly has, hasn't he? His, his legs are facing north to south. <laughs> his top half's facing east to west. It makes walking jolly tricky. I can only see what I'm going past, not what I'm going to. Uh, never mind about that. You can collect the real Professor Charles and tow that weather ship out to its correct station at once. Hey? You mean now, sir? <laughs> I think I want to die. <laughs> at once, I said, at once. But he, he can't navigate like that, sir. He's bad enough when you can see where he's going. <laughs> at once, you towed the beastly thing here so you can tow it back. Oh, don't be a nana all your life, Povey. That ship must stay here. It may be wanted as evidence or some such rot. In any case, it'll have to be checked to make sure some other roaring nut hasn't got at it. You should be congratulating these fools, not tearing them off a strip. Congratulating them? For what on earth for? For bashing that weather ship relief boat, of course. If they hadn't suspected that woman was a spy and run the relief boat down, she'd have gone out of that ship and sabotaged it, of course. Good thinking, chap. She, but they didn't. Oh, they... shut your cake hole, Povey. I'm off before closing time. Well, come to think of it, as you chaps have done so well, I'll take you with me. Oh, very kind, sir. You're highly unexpected, sir. And if somebody will steer me, thanks so much. <laughs> Not at all, it's a pleasure. I was looking for some idiot to buy me one. Go on. Yeah, but, but it's not fair. They, 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 hello, what is it now? It's your dear wife, Ramona. Oh. What time do you call this, Henry? I suppose you're sitting in your office boozing with your cronies and talking smut. No, no, of course not. And I'm... don't think you're going to get any tea when you do finally stagger home. What? Your deliciously Ramona boiled egg just went into orbit. <laughs> Which is hardly surprising. It's been on the gas stove waiting for you for three hours. <laughs> now, just you get back here at once. I want to clobber you with something. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen 
Stephen Murray, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips have been Weathering the Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Captain Purvey was played by Richard Caldicott, Mrs Purvey was Heather Chaston, the Admiral was Tenniel Evans, the real Professor Charles was Michael Bates, Abel Seaman Tilly was Laurie Wyman, and the mini-skirted spy was played by Elizabeth Morgan. The show was produced by Alistair Scott Johnston. (laughs) 